This is the firing room, launch control for the Apollo mission. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. We were making up for it in one big leap, and we were doing it with a rocket that no man had ever flown before. before Christmas 1968 when Apollo 8 sat on the pen. She was the first of a new kind, a moon rocket. This was the Phoenix risen from the ashes of Apollo 1. The first Apollo crew did not die in vain. This was to be their testimony. Thirty-six stories high, she had been fully fueled throughout the night. The liquid oxygen in her tanks caused ice to form on the outside of the craft. The extreme temperature differences between the air and the sub-zero fuel caused the metal skin of the rocket to expand and contract. Everyone who was on the pad agreed. It was as though the rocket was alive, breathing, straining at the leash. Earlier in the morning, astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders had made their final preparations before taking that long ride out to the waiting spacecraft. The minimum safe distance from a Saturn V at liftoff was three miles. The reason was simple. When fully fueled, the rocket contained the explosive power of an atomic bomb. As the clock counted down, the astronauts and all of us in launch control went through the pre-flight checks, our hands on the controls of the most powerful, most complex machine ever built. It had over two million separate systems, and to bring these men back alive, everything had to work perfectly. Each individual system had been tested, but what we didn't know was how they would perform when all two million began to work together. That moment would come when the countdown clock reached zero. If a maneuvering thruster failed, if communications broke down, if navigation was off by one degree, if any piece of the miles of wiring circuits, relays, or valves was defective, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders would pay with their lives. As they sat, waiting for launch on that chill December morning, these three astronauts went back to what they had always been, test pilots. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened. <laughs> Mankind is about to leave his planet behind and journey to another. It is one of those rare moments when history is not being made, destiny is being embraced. Saturn V launch vehicle begin to 
depressurized. We had firing command, the firing command is in, we are now on the automatic sequence, T minus two minutes, 20 seconds, and It indicates that all aspects are ready. Instrument unit is ready, spacecraft ready. Final check of the emergency detection system. That ready light also on. First stage preparations are completed. All systems are A-OK. Keep going. We're on. Ready to go to combat. Stand by, Walter. Okay, you're on. All systems go. 10 minutes, 45 seconds and coming. First stage, liquid oxygen tank has been pressurized and the pressure is still building up. Coming up in 90 seconds, mark T minus 90 seconds and coming. The Apollo 8 uh, crew standing by, spacecraft commander Frank Gorman, Jim Lover, Bill Anders. We now have a report that the liquid hydrogen tank in the third stage is pressurized. One minute, 15 seconds. stage propellants pressurized at this time as we come up on the 60 second mark on the flight to the moon. T minus 60 seconds and counting the vehicle now is completely pressurized. We're coming up on a power transfer shortly. We have the power transfer we're now on the flight batteries within the launch vehicle. Final reports coming from Frank Gorman at this time. Final look at the switch list aboard the spacecraft. 20 seconds, all aspects, we are still low at this time. T minus 